racial and ethnic diversity have long been seen as worthy goals in higher education. But the practice is under fire right now at the Supreme Court. Several groups who say admissions should be race neutral have a case before the court hoping to end affirmative action for good. And yesterday the court heard arguments against those policies at Harvard and the University of North Carolina. The backdrop, hundreds have been protesting at the steps of the high court, while inside the court's conservative majority didn't hide its skepticism about affirmative action. Brett Kavanaugh called the Harvard and UNC policies potentially dangerous, and Clarence Thomas said he couldn't get past the word diversity. Mr. Park, um, I've heard the word uh, diversity quite a few times, and I don't have a clue what it means. Uh, it seems to mean everything for everyone. For Elena Kagan, one of the court's three liberal justices, the issue is bigger than higher education. The question is, when the race neutral means don't get you there, are you prevented from taking race into account in all those ways that I said, and I could add a dozen more businesses who find it necessary, you know, in order to achieve their economic objectives to have racially diverse workforces? So that last part might surprise you, that, that colleges aren't the only places that like affirmative action. Companies that hire the graduates from those colleges, they've come around to it too. So much so that American Airlines and GM and Meta and Google and Apple were among the dozens of big corporations that filed briefs in support of affirmative action at these colleges. Used to be American companies weren't so keen on being told that race should be a part of any consideration. So what changed and how did it change? I am joined now by Stacey Hawkins, a professor and vice dean at Rutgers University uh, Law School. Thanks so much for, for being here, Professor. I think it's a good question. Um, maybe not everybody would have expected right away to have all those big corporations file the amicus briefs, but they did and they're worried. They are indeed, and it's not the first time. They actually, um, many of them at least, including GM, one of the um, uh, companies you listed, filed briefs in 2003 in the case that the Supreme Court took up involving the University of Michigan. So this has been a longstanding um, issue for corporations, and they have long said that diversity is critical to their business um, success. And so both having it in the colleges and universities from which they rec recruit and being able to have it in their own workplaces. So they need the recruits to come from those colleges. And if those programs end, their, their bottom line is going to suffer, they say. So in that 2003 uh, decision you were talking about, Sandra Day O'Connor, the justice back then, said that in 25 years, we weren't going to need affirmative action. And we're not at 25 years, but we're sure getting close. Is she wrong? Is she right? Was her timing off? What do you make of that? Well, in fact, Justice O'Connor herself later said that she may have been premature in that prediction. And when she stepped down from the court, when she was doing public uh, speaking about her time on the court, she said, you know, things have not moved as quickly as I might have anticipated. And um, that might have been a premature prediction. So even Justice O'Connor herself thought that, you know, that prediction might have been off. I think that we're all seeing, in fact, we've had some regression um, in terms of racial equality, racial progress, uh, racial justice issues in the last, you know, uh, five to seven years. So I think that um, many people would think that that prediction um, is a little bit off relative to where we are today. So here's a big question. Um, will everything fall apart if affirmative action does go away in these colleges? Will those numbers plummet like some suggest they might? Or could Clarence Thomas be right in suggesting, I, I don't even know what we mean anymore? Well, we don't have to guess. We have some pretty clear proof. There is a lot of um, modeling by uh, social scientists about the kind of race neutral proxies that colleges and universities might be able to use if they are prohibited from using race. And all of those modelings um, clearly demonstrate that colleges and universities will not be able to match the level of racial and ethnic diversity that they have today. Uh, we can also look to states like California and Michigan that have long been prevented from using race in college admissions under their state laws. And those schools also suffer dramatic declines, particularly among Black, Hispanic, and Native American students, and they have not fully recovered. In California, it's been over two decades. In Michigan, it's been over a decade, and they're still struggling to get back to their pre-affirmative um, uh, um, action ban levels of racial and ethnic diversity. So we, we don't have to guess. We do know that it's going to have significant impacts. Thank you for watching.
Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.